Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1117, the surprise ball pop-up, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. It has been over a decade since my first ball pop-up die. I've learned so much about die design in that time. And so this is a basically completely re-engineered version of the pop-up ball. It's much easier to assemble now. It will fit in a five by five square when flattened, so that makes it really nice for card makers. But of course you can put this on a layout or a mini album as well. Okay, four material choices on the ball itself. Go with a medium or heavyweight cardstock. So this is just a medium, like an 80 pound. This one's a little heavier, it's like a hundred pound. I would just avoid those really, really thin cardstocks. And I wanted to show as well that if you're using eight and a half by 11 cardstock, you can still get a full ball out of that sheet of paper. You just need to put the die in one corner and just use your scissors to trim pretty close to the die on that eight and a half by 11 sheet. Then you'll have enough room in the other corner to get the other half of the ball. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die. Today I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6 and I just need to use that ball die to cut two halves of the ball. Step one is just to make sure there isn't any paper stuck in the little holes or the triangles on the piece. So just go in and pop those out. The first folds I'll find are the little reinforcing flaps. So those glue to the back to reinforce those two sides of the ball that actually hold the rubber band. So I'm just folding those to the back. Now here inside the ball, I can go in and glue those down. And I do actually recommend glue for this. I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We sell both of those items on our website, but any kind of strong glue, but I just definitely think glue is best for the ball. Now, if you don't wanna sit there and hold that while it sets up, I usually have just some clips and paper clips just sitting near my desk. So I could just go in and clip those so that I can just keep moving and get all of those little side flaps glued down. So there's gonna be four little side flaps on each half of the ball. So I just find them, I push them towards the back, which is actually the inside of the ball, flip it over to the inside, add my glue, and get those glued down. While the second one is drying, I'll go back to the first one. Now I'm gonna turn that back over again to the outside of the ball because I can really see the score lines on that side. And what I wanna do is just find the six score lines that define the hexagon. So just going around and pushing all of those sides to the back and then back out again. So I've found all those folds. Then I come up to the other end and I do the tabs. So there's going to be the long tabs on the sides that have the holes and then there'll be half tabs on the other four. I'm going to find all those tabs by folding to the back. So now I have one half of the ball ready to go. And then this one should be dry, so I'll do the same thing. Turn it back over find my six folds that go around the hexagon. Then I go out to the end, I do half tab, full tab, half tab, half tab, full tab, and half tab. Okay, so now I've got both sides are identical. Now I'm going to glue these two ball halves together. So I'm looking for a side that has a hole and a slit, and I want to choose on the other ball the side where the hole and the slit line up perfectly and the slit is on the same side. So if I, if I choose poorly, the holes will line up, but the slits won't line up. And then after they're glued together, you wouldn't be able to get the rubber band in. So just make sure that when you're choosing how to glue these together, that the hole and the slit line up. And then we're just gonna put glue all over one of those tabs. And then we're gonna just kiss those together so that those holes and slits line up. So the fold will match the fold and inside the ball, which is probably the easiest way to do this. You can just make sure that all the corners and everything line up. You should be able to see through the hole through both sides. If you don't want to hold that while it sets up, you could go back to the paper clip trick again and just clip it together. If you plan on having the ball spin in your finished project, then this is the time to add the brad. And you do not need anything fancy. This will be completely hidden. Just an inexpensive office brad works fine and just put it through one of the holes and open it on the underside. Okay, let's talk about rubber bands. Here in the United States, you can go to any office supply store and find number 16 rubber bands. Okay, that's a very common size. They are two and a half inches by a 16th of an inch in diameter. Let's look at a number 16. Yep, sure enough, two and a half inches. Okay, really common size, that one will work fine. On the packaging, I mentioned that a number 14 is also a good choice, a two inch long band. You can see here what a number 14 is. 
And I even ordered some number 12s, which are an inch and three quarters. And those work nicely as well. So any of these sizes will work because you can adjust the tension of them. In fact, the stretch on these is different. And I noticed that and then I looked a little closer at the packaging and oh look, softest stretch for this particular brand. So it really just sort of depends. And I'm just gonna teach you how you can make any of these bands work. Go through the junk drawer, just find a rubber band. You can tie knots in it to tighten it up. So as long as it's about inch and three quarters, probably as a minimum, up to about two and a half inches, you can make it work. So I'm gonna grab the one in the middle here, that number 14. That's the one that I recommended on the packaging. And what I'm going to do is just slide that in the slit and into the hole on the side where I've glued those two together, okay? So now I can start putting this ball together, but I need to make sure that I'm going around on the side that does not have the slit. So as I start to glue these tabs, I need to make sure that I'm working on the side of the ball that doesn't have the slit. And what's going to happen is the two half tabs will come around and they are actually going to glue to the other side of the ball. So these tabs are not gluing to each other. They are gluing to the other half of the ball. They're just gonna sit side by side in there at the fold. One's gonna glue to one half, the other to the other half. So how is it easiest to do that? I generally start by keeping the ball kind of open like this so that I can just see the edges and make sure that I have a nice straight line there. And then that's why I love glue for this because I get a chance to kind of slide things around. Once I've got those pretty well started, then I can actually collapse the ball if I want to and give everything a good press. Okay, I am lamenting my very dark cardstock for this video because as I look inside the ball, I really can't see where the tabs are to show you. So let me just brighten it up a little bit and see if you can see that where one is attached to one half of the ball and the other one to the other half. Okay, I'm going to do this same exact thing on the next side. And I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because you're getting the idea. So glue on the two tabs, then I just make sure they're sitting next to each other and one is attaching to one half of the ball, the other one to the other. Make sure everything looks straight before I flatten it and give it a good pinch. Okay, and now I've worked my way around to where I have the other hole and slit. And remember, those are a kiss connection. So that one, they do glue to each other. So you put the glue on and then you can just flatten that and make sure that it's good and straight. And now we have half the ball connected. Okay, so I can open up these tabs and look inside the ball. And this is why I said it was important that you're working on the side that doesn't have the slit because look how easy it is now to reach in and just get the other half of the rubber band into the other slit and into the hole. And of course it depends on your cardstock too. So for this cardstock, I can tell this number 14 doesn't feel quite tight enough. I've got a pretty good gap on the back and giving it the thwap test where I push it and let it spring back up, I don't feel like it gives me enough spring. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that out of there. Now, if this is the only rubber band I have, then I'm gonna just tie a knot in it to make it a little tighter. But I have this number 12, so let me just switch to that one and see if I like that better. Okay, so again, really easy to put these bands in because I have the side of the ball open where I have access to the slit. Okay, I can tell I like this better. The gap in the back is smaller for one, and these sides are not inverted, so it's not too tight, but you can see that it's pulling those sides in a little bit. That's fine. Once I get the other two on, they'll come back out again. Thwap test is good. I like the spring back. So I've learned here that a number 12 soft stretch rubber band is really good for this particular cardstock weight. But let's say I only had number 14s or I only had number 16s, I can make that tighter by just tying a knot in it. So here's my number 14. I go around my fingers like I'm tying off a balloon and I just put a knot in the middle and that's gonna tighten up that band. And let's see if that's gonna resemble that same number 12 when I get that number 14 put in there with that knot in it. So once again, just stretching it across and into the holes. So you can see how this is all adjustable. And look, that looks really, really similar to what I had with the number 12. I've got those sides coming in kind of vertically. My gap in the back is real small. Give it the thwap test, perfect. Now remember, not all rubber bands have the same stretchiness. So taking that number 14 out, if I go to that number 16, remember that's not a soft stretch, that's a regular stretch rubber band. And I can just tell that by feeling it. So I'm gonna start with just one knot in that number 16, because even though it's longer, it has actually a tighter pull to it. So it really just does depend on your rubber bands and it depends on your cardstock. 
So just experiment with it until you get the combination that works. Really easy to put them in there so you can really experiment. And yep, I have the same thing now with a number 16 with one knot. So I'm gonna go ahead and go forward with that. Okay, the final two sides are half tab sides. So those are just like those first ones that we did where you put the glue on the two tabs and then you get them next to each other. Now that the band is in, you're probably gonna have to do this a little bit in that closed position by just flattening it out and making sure that it's straight. And I can squish that ball partially closed to make it easy to put my adhesive on the final two tabs and then get them next to each other and flatten it enough that I can pinch those until they set up. Okay, the ball is put together, makes a nice impressive thwap. But one thing I'm noticing is I've got a pretty good gap on my sides there that don't have the rubber band. Now I could just go with it, it's really fine, it's gonna be quite impressive. But I'll give you a couple little adjustment ideas. One thing you can do is flatten the ball and just work the folds on the sides. That kind of loosens them up a little bit and that will sometimes bring that gap a little closer together. Or another adjustment you can try is actually on where the gap is, you can just kind of carefully bring one side of the ball sort of over the other one a little bit like this. And that's just basically training them to come a little bit closer together. So just kind of one over the other and then push in that direction and then you can see how that's going to snuggy up that gap so it's not going to be quite as big and noticeable. So you get a bunch of decorator dies with this set including six identical pieces to be able to decorate the sides of your ball and leave a little shadow. That's also what you would use to cut out your photos if you wanted to add photos to the ball. The nice thing about those being big open dies is you can cut through two layers at once and since you need 12 sides to cover the ball, you can just do that all in one pass. Okay, so you have the hexagon that will cover the top of the ball and it will cover up that hole. Now, if you wanted the hole, for instance, you were doing this as, I don't know, an ornament, then you would just punch the hole through the solid hexagon as well. And then you have all of those side pieces to decorate the sides of the ball. And of course, you can just flatten it to be able to get in there and really get a good shadow around the whole piece. And I don't put any paper on the very bottom of the ball because you'll never see it. It'll be attached to the project. So here is my decorated ball ready for some embellishments. You get some generic shapes with the set, stars and circles, and then there's this little hanging heart set. So you've got one die that will cut the hanging heart and then you've got another just solid heart that fits in the middle. So since there are so many sides to decorate, if you're ever feeling a little stumped, you could just put one of those little hanging hearts on a side or two. I finished out the decoration of my ball by adding the coffee charms across the top and then spelled out the word coffee using our alphabet die set on the bottom. And then the circle and the coffee beans on the top came out of the coffee cup pop-up. You do have the option to just mail the surprise ball as a standalone. Just flatten it, put it in an A7 envelope. When they pull it out of the envelope, it pops right up. But you also can trap it behind a card. So to make a petal fold card, I will start with a square of cardstock 5 inches by 5 inches. I will use our new flap enclosure die set. The flap is five inches wide, so it is perfect for the surprise ball. And the die has scored a tapered tab on each flap. So I'm just reinforcing that fold with a bone folder, and then I'm just going to glue those tabs up behind my square of cardstock. Now you can obviously use that flap for a single flap closure card or an envelope, so that's just completely up to you. But this is how you would do it when you wanna make a petal fold card to hold the ball. Okay, before adding my ball in the center, I'm going to add a decorative piece of paper, and I've just cut that a little bit smaller than five inches, so that's four and three quarters square. And then with the petals folded in, it's actually easy to just line up the die over the open area, and then you can get the center to add a hole for the brad that's on the bottom of the surprise ball. So just an easy way to get it centered. Okay, when you go to add the ball inside, then you want to flatten it and keep it flat while you undo the brad prongs, otherwise the brad will fall out inside the ball. So just keep it all tightly pressed down while you push the brad through, and then on the back side you can open up the brad prongs. Okay, so now the ball is attached inside the card. I can spin it on that brad to see all the different sides, and then when it flattens, I'm still able to fold in all four of the flaps. 
The closure part of the flap and closure die set are these two dies that will cut the two washers and six spacers all at one time. So I've got my six spacers, my two washers. I'm also going to need a couple of decorative brads and a long piece of twine. I've used the decorator die in the set to cut the pattern paper to decorate the outside of the flaps. So I've just done that same wood grain pattern paper. You can see how that cuts it a little bit smaller so you get that little shadow all the way around. A clip is a great way to hold your surprise ball down while you're working on the closure. And what I'm going to do is just figure out where I want the washers to end up and then just trace through the center with a pencil. And that's where I'm going to stack up my spacers. So I'm going to put three spacers around each one of those pencil lines. And I'm just using my quick stick to easily pick those up. Okay, once my spacers are on, then I'm going to open the whole piece up so that I can pierce a hole through the flap through the center of those spacers. Now, one of the closures is just going to be a brad through a washer through the spacers open up on the other side. For the other closure, I want to put the twine through the hole first and leave a little bit inside the flap before I add my brad and my washer through the spacers. And then inside, I can open up those brad prongs and then just wrap all that extra tail of twine around the brad, get it trapped in there, maybe secure it finally with a little bit of glue, and then once I put my paper over the top, it will really trap that down. Okay, so to operate the closure, I just flatten the ball, put in the sides that don't have the closure first, then the closure sides, and then the twine just wraps back and forth around the washers. Then when I add my decorative paper pieces inside the flaps, they will cover up the brad prongs. Just making the petal envelope is a nice finished card, especially if you use a light colored paper inside on the flaps, you could just write on the inside. Here's one where I decorated it like a cupcake, hung a few charms off the top that kind of bounce around with the ball. And then I would just put this right into an envelope and mail it. Another option is to use a five by seven card, and then you'd have a space on the inside to write a personal greeting. This is the one that I made for the packaging sample. It has pictures on it. These are pictures from our trip to New York and you can see I decorated it like the big apple. Now for my card in this video, I decided on a five by seven postcard style. So on the back, I just decorated it with that coffee cup used flat so it could hold a gift card and then just a cross hatch rectangle to be able to write my personal greeting. And then I'm going to add my surprise ball on the front of the card. So I've gone ahead and added my pattern paper strips top and bottom. Then I add my petal fold. I used plenty of glue on that. And then as a final touch, I'm going to use the word enjoy from our enjoy the ride die set. And then one last little touch, I just added some rickrack around the bottom of the card. So it would kind of decorate the rectangle on the back, just tied it on a little knot on the front. So an A7 envelope is perfect for these cards. And imagine the fun of getting a card like this in the mail. You open it up and then you just undo the twine and then ta-da, surprise ball. You can spin it then around and see all the different sides of it. And then for my card, it has that added bit on the back where it holds a gift card. I love to end assembly videos with some samples by our amazing design team. This is already a very long video, so I'm just going to blaze through some of these ideas. You can definitely check out the blogs of our very talented design team or join us on Facebook, on our Facebook page and our group, the Karen Berniston Pop-Up Peeps. The design team and people from all over the world are posting all the time in there with some great ideas. But here's just a few ideas that the design team came up with for the ball. And you can see lots of different uses of that flap enclosure, different types of cards used to trap those balls. The surprise ball is just such a good generic surface that you can use year round for any theme. And of course you can decorate it with your stamps. You can use dies, you can decorate it with photos, some combination of all of those things. So it really is just up to your imagination. The surprise ball pop-up will be available on our website as well as a lot of your favorite online and local retailers starting mid-November 2019. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.